So I guess O.J. Simpson was hanging out in Vegas uh, over the weekend with Bills fans. Doesn't he live there? Uh, oh, because because they made the playoffs. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So he he was uh, he was. Uh, you have the a, bars. Like, a watching party or something? Yeah, yeah. And he was taking photos with uh, with 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 fans with Bills fans. He was wearing his old Bills jersey back in the day. Oh my God! So my question to you what is: it's like, What it's like to be a free man? I guess. Huh? If you saw O.J. at a bar in Vegas, would you go up to him? Vegas, yes. My guard is down in Vegas. Uh, in Vegas, I would be like YOLO. I, I tend to have this, uh, you know, I met Carrot Top and his grandma in a bar in, in Vegas. I, didn't know, I did not know this. And I actually sat down and had drinks with him for a, a fair amount of time. I mean, he's just sitting there having, what, lunch with his grandma or dinner? Or yeah, what? so this was prior to his residency in, in Vegas. And um, I was, we were at the Hard Rock Casino and I was doing some gambling. And this is like one of my first trips to Vegas. This is like 20 years ago. And probably 21, maybe even 22. I think I went to Vegas before I was 21 because I had a solid uh, 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 fake ID. And I was gambling in the casino. And my buddy comes over and he goes, dude, you're not going to believe this. But Carrot Top, the comedian's sitting over there having dinner and drinks with his grandma. <laughs> I'm like, and you can't mistake Carrot Top. I mean, he, he right. sticks out. Even though then he did not look like all plastic surgery and stuff yeah. like that. He, he was, just had the red hair. He was just normal Carrot Top. And I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, you got to come over there. I've been talking to him for the last 15 minutes. My, oh, great. My, my friend is very, he's very, uh, he's got a lot of attitude. At the time, he was an aspiring actor, so uh, maybe he had some stuff to talk to Carrot Top about. You're talking about your friend Nick? Yeah. Well, yeah, and he's just, he'll talk to anybody. He's yeah. one of these guys, he'll just talk to it, anybody. He'll stop and talk to you on the street, and it's just like, as long as there's some drinks in him, he'll do some talking. And um, so I go, I'm like, okay, and I left the, the table. I was killing it at that table too i was doing really good i was like up like 525 dollars which is good money when you're 20 years old you know and uh yeah, of course. And i'm up and i'm like okay and I, I break the hot streak <laughs> i put all my chips in my pocket i go over there i sat and i talked to carrot top i forget what the conversation was about because i was gambling and i'd been drinking a little bit but i talked to him and his grandma and, I, and they were really nice people like soup like as nice as could be I, that's what i took away obviously from if you and your dumb drunk friend are sitting over there bothering them yes, while they're just exactly. trying to eat and they didn't shoot you off yeah and, like, and dude, be they had good. lengthy conversation with us which i thought was pretty cool and ever since i've always been a carrot top fan because hell the guy's cool and he's somewhat of a celebrity you know were you a fan before really no. Yeah. Of God course. no. Yeah. Like, I, who's a fan of Carrot Top? I, no I've idea. Heard people that you know kind of went to the show and like, actually they enjoyed it, and then they became kind of a fan. But you're really not a fan of that guy before that. Yeah, I, that I'd seen sense. like maybe probably four minutes of stand up prior to meeting him, but I knew who he was because he was kind of popular on the stand up scene at that time, at that wrinkle of time. That I was like, okay. Well, they don't just have restaurants in the middle of casinos. I mean, they did. They did at this one. So the way, and it's not designed like that anymore, but the way that the old Hard Rock uh, Casino used to be, it was a big circle, okay, um, kind of like a record, and it was a big circle, and on the outer layers, you had the, um, the uh, slot machines, and then as it moved in, table you had games. table games, and then raised up in the middle... Was, of, a restaurant? was a restaurant slash bar that had a balcony that overlooked the entire casino that I was see. 360 degrees. It was a uh -huh. it was a good design for a casino, and it, you could go into that bar and you know have drinks and play video poker and have dinner. Um, it, it was very casual dinner, but it was it was dinner, and then that's how. I don't think I could ever just walk up to somebody, especially if they're sitting down eating, and even if I had drinks, and just start but talking in to them. Vegas, you think that anything goes. Because you're right. I, I If that would have happened here, I would be like, don't bother. I'm not going to bother Carrot Top and his grandma. No way. But in Vegas, I'm like, dude, you're, especially if you're somewhat of a celebrity and you put yourself out there to be where you are attainable by the public in Vegas, because there are a lot of places you can hide in Vegas, then yes, I would probably be hanging out with OJ Simpson <laughs> if I was a Bills fan. And you don't remember the conversation. No, I don't remember the conversation you, at all. You I think remember you told I was, him you were winning money. Hey, I was, yeah, I did tell money. him I was winning money. I was probably very belligerent, very stupid, very drunk. But he had the patience to sit there and talk to me and my friend as we sat there 
and uh, struck up a uh, fr- a ten minute friendship, uh, and then we moved on our way. OJ, uh, no incidents. He was just taking pictures with everybody. He's, I think he loves being a star. I heard it was Again, killer. We're asking you the coolest celeb that you've ever met. And uh, I'm not sure who it is because they didn't leave their name, but they wrote in that they met Stone Cold Steve Austin once mm-hmm. in Detroit uh, at an airport bar. and uh, Or, I'm sorry, was at a dive bar near an airport and ran into uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin. He says at the time that he didn't know that it was Stone Cold Steve Austin, but it was a huge bald guy eating two hamburger baskets. <laughs> so he went over to him. He was by himself. said, are you Steve Austin? He said, yeah. He sat down with him. Uh, Steve wanted to play some pool, so they played pool for a pitcher of beer. He says he ended up beating Steve Austin and hanging out for a Steve while. Steve Austin he, bought him the pitcher of beer, or did he Did he just pour it down his throat? Yeah. Remember, that's what he used to do to his opponents. He used to take the beer and pour it down their throat. Just dump it. Uh, uh, said they finished the beer together. Didn't go into details on how it went, but that, that's actually a pretty that's good funny, story. Uh, because I had, I had a group of friends. There was a 24-hour uh, restaurant by the airport in Seattle. It's called 13 Coins. Have you, did you ever eat at 13 Coins? No, I know that it was at the top of a hotel, wasn't it? It was the bottom of the hotel. Or bottom of the hotel. Uh, or actually, it, it was a hotel, then it be, turned into an office I always building. wanted to go to 13 Coins because everybody always talks about it. Yeah, 13, 13 Coins is good. If you're, ever, if you're ever back in Seattle and you need to go. The 13, there's one downtown. If you're and stuck the, at the airport and you have time to kill, one right? out at the airport, yeah. yeah. Um, I'm not sure if the one downtown is still there because Amazon took over that whole neighborhood that they're in. But man, those, that's some. It was it was like 24 hour fine dining, and back in the day, that was the only place you could get fine dining at 24 hours. So near the uh, airport. So if like you were balling on a night and you got done with the bars, then you could go to 13 Coins and get good food, or you could go to Denny's if you're not balling and get bad food. Um, and that was kind of your, your two options if you grew up in my neighborhood. Very rarely did we end up at 13 Coins, but... I remember there was a little uh, casino down the street, and uh, if, if people won, you would go to 13 Coins Yes, if you lost, yeah. Silver yeah. Dollar Casino, you remember it well. I remember uh, losing there. And uh, the blackjack tables weren't always favorable there. Um, they, uh, you, But if you ended up at 13 Coins, uh, you'd be like my friends. I had a group of three friends. Now, they're girls, okay? Um, they ran into, God, it was some other wrestler and Lex Luger. Um, I forget who the other wrestler was, but he was, I think, I want to say Ric Flair, but that doesn't, nec- I'm not 100% sure on that, but they ran into both these guys. Now, there were girls. There was a group of three girls, and they ended up striking up a conversation with them, and they're talking to Lex Luger and Ric Flair and end up eating with Rick, Le- Lex Luger and Ric Flair. And I'm sure Lex Luger and Ric Flair's uh, designs on the way the evening were going to work out were not that <laughs> of the girls. And it was funny because one of my uh, one of the my friends that met up with these guys at the at the restaurant calls my buddy up because she was dating my buddy, and she's like, "You're never going to believe this, but Lex Luger's here." He's like, "Nah." He's like, "Yeah, I'm, we're eating dinner with him right now." So she said, she turns to Lex Luger, she goes. Hey, my boyfriend's a big fan of yours. Does you do you mind if he he meets you down? He meets us down here, and at that point, Lex Luger, I guess, has to say yes, right? So he did. He's like, well, I got the other two. He did say yes, and Chad goes down there and he ends up having dinner with him. He's like telling me about it the next day. I was like, aren't you pretty sure that you know Lex Luger was trying to put the moves on your girlfriend? He's like, yeah, but I showed up. <laughs> yeah, what were you going to do? I, know, I was like, yeah, but you, what are you going to do, beat him up? Yeah, he's, he's Lex Luger, and you're a, not going to beat him up. He's a professional wrestler, for God's sakes. But, I, uh, it, you know, he, he said he ended up being really cool to him. Oh, well, that's cool. And it wasn't that's like trying to be a jerk at all. Because I would think going into that situation, oh, my God, what is my girlfriend doing sitting at 13 coins with professional wrestlers at 3 o'clock in the morning? We had an opportunity to uh, play in the Vince Neal Golf Tournament, which is a charity fundraiser uh, for uh, children with cancer because he lost one of his daughter to cancer. Mm-hmm. and uh, But he's turned this thing into, like, rock stars, porn stars, and strippers. Yes. And you get down there, and it's like everybody from the Playboy Channel at the time, and this was, what, 10 years, 11 years ago? And uh, we, we took some people uh, down there with us, the people that, you know, that listened to the radio station wanted to play. And we got a limo, and we went down there, and we didn't know what to expect. We were late. We get out on the course. Stuck in traffic because it's, you know, of course. There's Hooters girls everywhere. Mm-hmm. There's girls from Playboy. There's every sh- every hole. There's there's girls wearing lingerie pouring shots down your throat. I'm like, oh, my God, this is nuts. Yeah, that's a, it, was a, it was a fun golf tournament. I don't know if it's still like that. I don't think it is uh, like that anymore. Well, I'm glad we got into the it's good a, old days. It's a different climate now. 
And, yeah. uh, and, and, and as so far as golf tournaments are Afterwards, concerned. we get to uh, go to the dinner, and then Vince Neal and his wife at the time, I don't think they're together anymore, they sit at our <laughs> table, and they're, they're kind of quiet, but they're hanging out with us, and Mr. Belding sits down. And yeah, we're like, why drunk. are you guys sitting with us? This is kind of cool, but whatever. We ended up at this table all together, so it's cool. And of all the celebrities that were sitting at that table, Vince Neal and... Dennis Haskins. Mr. I, Belding. I think Mr. Belding. Saved by the Belding I think, principle. I think Dennis Haskins is the better. And I think he was the better singer as well because <laughs> I, I secured some footage of him singing karaoke. He loves his karaoke. He's a good singer? He does. No. That he does. Girl was no good for me. Oh, yeah. He really does. So I lost like a slave that no man could free. Oh, my God. That's why. Isn't that how it all is? It's it, for for all of us. Is we always think we're all good singers. Well, yeah, we go, but I'm, that's why I'm, we do you karaoke. Know, I'm seven eight cocktails in, so that's why I think I'm a good singer. But then I go back and I see this on YouTube, and I'm like, I'm not doing that anymore. When that man drove away. I was waiting. I crossed the street to her I got, house. I got to share the the, uh, the principal from Saved by the Bell on, on our... Uh, so, you know, in the later years, he's put on a lot of weight. He's lost a lot of hair. And uh, Jeff goes over and starts talking to him. And he's got... I remember there was two girls at one point, and then Jeff got there. One of them left. Yeah. And I think it was one of... They were either strippers smell, or... I smelled. Something. I'm sure. Of but, golf course and, uh, and booze. And booze, yeah. And uh, you guys had quite the... What did you guys talk about? We talked about Saved by the Bell. We talked about the kids in Saved by the Bell, and he, weirdly enough, talks about those kids. A.C. Slater, Screech, Zach, Kelly Kapowski, uh, Lisa Turtle, and Jesse Spano. He talks about those kids as if he was their real principal. <laughs> like a father figure yes. almost? Now, like I said, I had some cocktails in me, so I, I don't really remember the details of the conversation, but I remember talking to him about Screech in particular and talking to him about Screech. Screech was going through a lot back then. Yeah. He stabbed somebody and he was... Yeah, yeah, he lost his house. He was trying to uh, sell T-shirts to try to save the mortgage on his house in like Wisconsin or something like that. And um, and I was at, I said, you know, what is... Is Screech really, did you know? Did you really think that he was going to go off the rails like that? He's like, he's like, I feel terrible for what happened to Dustin <laughs> because that's his name is Dustin Diamond. Yeah, because I feel terrible for what happened to Dustin. A lot of it had to do with his role on the television show. I mean, he truly believes, and and that's like one thing I took away is like he was taking taking it serious as if it was like real school that he was kind he was like of typecast as the, a dorky loser, the fake principal of. And I was like, whoa, dude, you really take your art to uh, art, your craft to heart, man. That's pretty cool. And so I was sitting there talking to him about it. He's, he talked about the rest of the kids. He's like, uh, you know, in a, in a weird, he even, I remember him saying, even in a weird way, I'm kind of proud of what all of them were able to do except for Screech. <laughs> and I'm like, you were just. As he's got a as he's got a stripper on his lap. You were just pretending to be their principal, dude. <laughs> What's the stripper doing the whole time? Just sitting there? Yeah, she's just sitting there keeping company. Rubbing his back? Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember looking over, and I was about not much further than I am now from you, and I was talking to somebody else, and then I kept looking over at you, and there's the stripper sitting on his back, and she had her arm around the, mm -hmm. the backside, and he and you were just having this conversation. I'm like, intense. wow, they're really, like, talking yeah, no, over there. No, that was an intense... This isn't, like, casual. This it was is an like, intense... They're into something. 20, 25-minute conversation about Saved by the Bell. I All wish right. I wish I'd have had a microphone then. God, mine's lame. It's not even close to that good. It's uh, Alan White, the drummer of Yes. I had a friend that knew him, and uh, he invited me over to his house, and and you know had a nice party. I met him. He's like, "Hey, you play the drums?" I'm like, "No." He's like, "I'm like, but can did I just tell, sit on your kit?" Did and, you tell me you played the spoons? No, I didn't. That's percussion. No, I ended up getting very drunk that night. My wife had to haul and me out still, of there, and you still didn't. Uh, you still didn't play the spoons, even no, though you got drunk. No, no, because that's no. when you're at your, your best with the I was, spoons. I was in my early twenties, and Dude, you know, uh, who knows if you would have played your cards right, you could have been a member of Yes. Yeah. Good morning, <laughs> Jeff and Jeremy in the morning on ninety. 3.3 KZOZ.